What is going on guys? Coach Show Garage Day Last Swole. We got a special video for you guys. So if you don't remember, about 10 months ago, I started doing some grip training and specifically doing the rice bucket. I actually made a whole video about the rice bucket, how to use it, why I'm using it, and then kind of fast forward today, we're gonna see the progress that was made. So if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend click the card above, go and watch it. It's kind of one of those videos that was funny. I put it out, it's getting no views. And then for whatever reason, I think we're at like 50 some thousand views. So maybe it's good thumbnail title or people are just more interested in grip training now. So that makes me really pumped. So watch the video if you haven't and then come back and then we'll see what's going on. So with that video, I want to do like a six month after. Obviously life gets really crazy, right? We have a baby on the way. My wife's eight months pregnant. We got a new house. So a lot of moving and stuff. So the time frame kind of just slipped out of my mind, but I got the video done. A little bit of background with the grip training. Uh, probably since that video, I was hitting it really heavily, kind of towards the winter. And then I kind of shifted my goals, getting on a pretty regimented program, more strength based, uh, but I was still doing grip training with the regular training in that program. Uh, when it came to rice bucket specific training, I was either using it to kind of warm up my hands or as its own session. But one thing I did notice is the more I was doing that rice bucket on top of my normal training and grip training, I started to really fatigue my hands. So I kind of wanted to find that happy medium of how can we make it as beneficial as possible without over fatiguing the hands um, and kind of being counterproductive. So with that, it was once or twice a week and primarily using it, like I said, to warm up my grip, but also more for recovery uh, for my hands and my elbows. So we're gonna fast forward. I'm actually gonna take you inside. We're gonna do a hand measurement. So like I said, this is 10 months post the original video and we'll see what happens. I don't really have many expectations or don't really know if my hands have grown or not. I wish that they have, but we'll see once I do the, the trace the hand and then I'm gonna measure it as well uh, with the evidence and we'll recap after that. All right, guys, the results are in, and you are not the father. Just kidding. Uh, so we're in the new house kitchen here, but I do have the results. I got my left and right hand. Uh, the original ones were done on October 26th of 23, and then just did the measurements, and that was August 31st of 24. Not gonna lie, I was pretty surprised with these results. I do think there are some nuances to them, which we'll talk about, but I want you guys to see as we kind of go over bird's eye view of the before and after of both the left and right hand. All right, hopefully you guys can see this. So we're gonna cover the left. Actually, I gotta switch these around or all my bodybuilding friends are gonna freak out with the before and then the after. So this is the left hand. Okay, this is October 26th of 23. So I'm new to this, but I just have fun experimenting on different things. So I didn't know the exact places to measure. I just went with the widest part across my palm. Uh, and then I went on the widest part across the fingers from what it seemed. Now, my fingers are pretty jacked up from playing sports and football. I've broken pretty much all of my fingers or had some sort of compound fracture in a couple of my fingers as well. So they're a little janky. Uh, and like I said, this can be a little bit nuanced where maybe I didn't trace 100%, but I do think the evidence shows that there has been uh, growth enough to kind of take away any of the minor minute measurement uh, screw ups on my end. So one of the left hand first, I'm a righty. So the left hand across from the bottom of the pinky all the way to the base of the thumb is four inches and 14 sixteenths of an inch. Then we go over to my pinky. That's three fourths of an inch. Uh, then we have the ring finger. That's three fourths of an inch. Middle finger, three fourths of an inch. Uh, the index finger is 13 sixteenths of an inch. And then we have three quarters of an inch for the thumb. So take it for what it is. I don't know why all my fingers are pretty much almost the same size uh, across the board there, but you can definitely see that there is a difference between the left hand. So I forgot to measure this base here, uh, but across the wrist was 2.5. So on the left hand here, my pinky is one inch. Then we have an inch and one sixteenth for the ring finger, which is absolutely bonkers. Uh, then we have the middle finger being an inch, and then we have 14 sixteenths 
on the index. Um, so these first three fingers have grown a solid chunk. The sausageness has definitely been cooking. Uh, my index finger has been slower on the gains. So I got to work uh, a little bit more pointing at people in the face because people love when you do that. And then we have an inch and 16 or, or 1 16th uh, over here. So thumb has definitely gotten fatter. I can actually visibly see the difference in my thumbs on my right and left hand size wise. So just interesting to take that. Um, but once again, that was almost a year to be honest with you. So more than six months. So if you could tell by six months, maybe we'd have half the gains in the hand here, but over the course of a year, there was definitely some gains. The righty. All right, so here's the right hand. So I'm a right hand dominant. And I did measure the base across the wrist. So on the right hand prior, we have two inches for the wrist. Then we have for the thumb, three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch for the index. For the middle finger, it was 15 sixteenths of an inch. So almost have an inch there, but I'm just quite shy from being just a beast of a middle finger. Uh, and then we have 15 sixteenths as well for the uh, ring finger. And then we have three quarters of an inch for the pinky. Now we move over to the right. Uh, oh, I forgot to say the, the uh, width span of my palm was four inches and 13 sixteenths of an inch across. Okay, so move over to the right, just done uh, 2.5 inches. So I have gotten some thickness to the wrist, uh, which is great. The thumb is an inch. So we went up about a quarter of an inch for our thumb. And the, uh, that'd be the index finger is one and I think it's two, two or three sixteenths of an inch. Then we have an inch on uh, one sixteenth for the middle finger, one inch for the ring finger, and then 14 sixteenths of an inch for the pinky. And then across we have five inches where this was four inches and 13 sixteenths. So definitely have a bigger hand in general. It's, it was pretty crazy to see the difference in the size of my hands. Um, but I do have anecdotal evidence of people that I knew over the last couple of years when we've done some grip training where they shook my hand or we've done some arm wrestling, they've been like, dude, your hands feel stronger. They're just thicker. They're fatter. You know, the, the sausageness is just super ripe in these mittens of yours. So, you know, I got to take it with a grain of salt, you know, be humble. Um, but I definitely have felt my hands getting fatter per se. Um, but that's kind of the evidence so far. So we'll kind of hit some key points before we wrap this sucker up. But I just wanted you guys to see, right, this difference in the, uh, the hands, just the mass, the density of the, these brick layers that we have here. All right, guys, real quick before we cut to the outro, just a couple anecdotal things. One thing I want to talk about is this has been a novel stimulus for me over the past year, okay? So prior to this, all I did was my regular lifting programs. I didn't devote a ton of specific grip work other than maybe some strongman implements or doing farmer carries, deadlifts, you know, just doing your regular exercises. But this past year, I've heavily devoted to getting my hands thicker, stronger, fatter, increasing my grip. So I want to say that this is the, the newbie hand gains that I've received. And from here on out, probably going to get a little bit slower. Uh, the other thing that can be nuanced is going to be my tracing ability. Okay. Obviously I'm using my non-dominant hand to trace could be a little bit off, but I do think since there is such a visual difference, even if I was off by a couple sixteenths of an inch, there's still gains that have been made, which I'm super pumped about. Uh, and then lastly, being on performance enhancing drugs, right? I do performance enhancing drugs. We've talked about this before. It's nothing new, uh, but that could also increase the rate at which the growth I've had, uh, you know, across skeletal muscle, bone density, all that kind of stuff. Not saying that you're still not going to get gains if you are completely natty, uh, but I'm always transparent and honest with you guys. So things to consider, but I do think if you haven't prioritized grip training uh, or forearm or hand stuff, in your training routine and made it a legit goal, then you definitely are gonna get some gains if you guys incorporate it over time. And once again, this was about a year's difference. Uh, so pretty cool to see, just a fun video to make. I know you got a lot of you guys were asking about the differences here. So there you have it. And yeah, let's wrap this video up. Hey guys, so there you have it. After we did the measurements in the office, 
you do see that my hands have grown and the sausage finger army is on the rise, which makes me absolutely pumped. But it has been a 10 month period, okay? So these aren't like astronomical gains of growth or anything like that. Uh, but it does show if you keep in one grip training, okay? It's not only going to help increase your grip, which is great for longevity. It's also gonna be great for your joints and tendons. And if you have specific grip goals or you just wanna have longevity, uh, grip is a great thing to train. Now, a little bit of nuances here is I can't dedicate all these results solely to the rice bucket because I was doing other grip training. I do think if you're looking to help with recovery, especially when it comes to just your hands or arthritis uh, or your elbows, doing some rice bucket training once or twice a week, five to six minutes is beneficial, especially working those extensors. One of the biggest things I felt anecdotally is throughout the last year, my elbows really haven't been bothering me. Uh, now that could be due to proper training and fatigue management of obviously you know, what I'm doing volume-wise with pulling and grip work, but I also do think whenever I've been doing the extensor work specifically in the bucket, it has helped. Uh, so if you guys have elbow issues, tendon issues in the hands or the elbows, I definitely recommend that minimally um, or to just use the rice bucket to kind of prime your hands, especially as you get older, right? We wanna keep our grip strength as strong as possible and there has been evidence that correlates longevity to how strong people's grip is. So overall, just a really fun experiment. You guys can play with it yourself and see how it works, figure out the volume that's needed for you to get the benefits for what you're looking for with your grip training. Uh, but definitely gonna keep doing grip training throughout my lifetime and something that I really enjoy and it's fun. So I'm gonna keep it in. Whoa, lost my pen, got it. Uh, but you guys can play around and let me know down in the comment section below with what you think of it and maybe if you've been using your rice bucket since watching that video and any anecdotal evidence that has worked best or found yourself. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, check out the other grip training videos I've put out over the last year or so. I think you'll find a lot of golden nuggets on how you can better your grip, your hand strength, and increase your forearm size. Uh, but that's all I have, guys. If you're interested in programming or anything like that, links are down below. We have a la carte programs, one-on-one -on -one coaching, all that good stuff. I don't know what I'm talking about, but hey, if you wanna see what the world inside my mind is like, you'll click the link, try a program, and maybe you'll get jacked and strong. I don't know, but that'd be really cool. Seems like a lot of people have, but what the frick do I know? So until then, guys, stay a lean, mean strength machine. I'll catch up with you next time. Peace.